Imagine a world turned to ashes in a flash. This is the reality of a nuclear strike. Our planet has been a stage for nuclear tests for decades, but what if the unthinkable happens? What if a nuclear bomb detonates in your city? Stay with us as we walk you through this grim reality. We'll dissect the mechanics of a nuclear explosion, its destructive aftermath, and how you could possibly survive such a catastrophic event. Remember, this is a hypothetical scenario, but understanding it could be crucial. Now let's dive into the first phase, the detonation. The bomb detonation will be accompanied by a brilliant white flash outshining the of the sun. This overwhelming burst can cause temporary or even permanent vision impairment to anyone looking straight at. Phase 2. The Shockwave After the initial blinding flare, an immense shockwave, a wall of pure force begins to ripple outward from the blast's heart. It's an invisible, deafening herald of destruction that commands nothing but utmost respect. Born from the chaos of the explosion's nucleus, it travels at a velocity that defies human comprehension, moving faster than sound itself. It carries with it the raw, pulverizing power of the blast, primed to obliterate everything within its path. Every structure, regardless of its size or strength, stands vulnerable against this relentless wave. Buildings, once symbols of human achievement, crumble like sandcastles. The shockwave does not discriminate. Glass, known for its transparency, can't escape the onslaught. Windows explode into a deadly hail of shards. Even automobiles, symbols of human mobility, are merely playthings in the face of this force, as they are tossed around like discarded toys in a child's playground. The shockwave is the explosion's most terrifying aspect, transforming a bustling city into a scene of devastation in just moments. If you're within this radius, the force alone could be lethal. Phase 3. The Firestorm As the shockwave from the initial explosion dissipates, the immediate aftermath reveals a disturbing spectacle of destruction. Buildings standing tall and proud are reduced to rubble, their skeletal structures glowing ominously in the encroaching twilight. The intense heat radiating from the epicenter of the devastation begins to ignite scattered detritus. Isolated blazes spring to life across the cityscape, their flickering tongues licking the air hungrily. The eerie silhouette of the city is bathed in an unholy glow as the fires start to spread. In the heart of the city, these individual fires, each raging in their fury, meet and merge. They unite into one terrifying entity, a firestorm, a living, breathing beast of flame and fury. This behemoth of destruction starts to feed on the city, growing stronger, more relentless with each passing second. The firestorm then starts a bizarre and terrifying dance. It sucks in more and more an insatiable hunger driving its actions. This phenomenon creates a powerful wind, a gale force suction that begins to pull everything in its path towards the conflagration. People, vehicles, fragments of buildings, nothing escapes the relentless pull of the firestorm. It's a horrifying maelstrom, a whirlwind of destruction that sweeps across the city with an inexorable force. Debris, lifted from the ground and pulled towards the fire, transforms into deadly projectiles, further feeding the chaos. The firestorm sucks in more and more air, creating a wind that pulls people and debris towards the fire. Phase 4. The Fallout What goes up must come down. The immediate aftermath of a nuclear explosion is characterized by the unforeseen rise of radioactive debris into the Earth's atmosphere. Like hot air balloons soaring into the blue skies, these particles of destruction commence their unfathomable ascension. But gravity is an inevitable force. What ascends will eventually start its descent. In the following moments, a surreal spectacle unfolds. The particles of radioactive debris, once high above, begin their downward journey. Floating downwards like leaves in autumn, the debris gradually starts to settle back to Earth. The spectacle, however beautiful, is fraught with danger. The settling debris brings about a deadly phenomenon known as fallout. The resultant fallout is a silent killer. It spreads like an invisible wildfire, contaminating vast expanses of land in its wake. What was once teeming with life could become an uninhabitable wasteland, rendered barren for decades, even centuries. This fallout can contaminate large areas, making them uninhabitable for decades, even centuries. Phase 5. The Radiation A terrifying aftermath is now unfolding for those who survived the initial cataclysmic blast. The dust and smoke had barely settled when a new insidious danger began to creep through the air, invisible and deadly. This danger is the feared specter of radiation sickness, a lethal consequence of massive exposure to the radioactive fallout. The survivors, already shell-shocked by the devastating blast, now find themselves in the clutches of this daunting peril. 
This is not a danger that can be fought with weapons or repelled by physical barriers. It is an unseen, unheard, untouchable enemy that infiltrates the body, wreaking havoc from within. The symptoms of radiation sickness are horrifying. Exposure to high levels of radiation as these survivors have been, can lead to debilitating nausea that keeps them bedridden. The victims are also crippled by overwhelming weakness, a deep fatigue that seems to seep into their very bones. They may lose their hair, once a symbol of vitality, now a chilling reminder of their possible fate. The cruel reality is that in severe cases, radiation sickness leads to a painful, often protracted death. Those who survived the initial blast now face a new danger, radiation sickness. Exposure to high levels of radiation can lead to nausea, weakness, hair loss, and even death. Phase 6. The Aftermath. A once magnificent city now lies in ruins, a shadow of its former glory. The aftermath of the cataclysm has left behind destruction and desolation. Buildings once tall and proud are now merely shattered remnants of what they used to be. Survivors, if there are any, may be trapped under heaps of debris, caught in a terrifying ordeal that they never asked for. Everywhere, fires continue to rage on, their flames dancing menacingly, consuming whatever is left standing in their wake. The air reeks of devastation, of pain. In the midst of it all, radiation levels are soaring. They are dangerously high, an invisible threat even more deadly than the visible destruction. Hospitals, the city's last hope for saving lives, if they remain standing, are overwhelmed. They are overcrowded with the injured, the dying, a sight that hits harder than the destruction outside, painting a poignant picture of the aftermath. Phase 7. The Recovery An intense whirlwind of activities ensues as the emergency services, equipped with their training and perseverance, attempt to traverse the harsh conditions to reach the impacted region. Amidst the rubble and ruin, they are the beacon of hope for those who are struggling for survival. These heroes don't wear capes, but their uniforms signify their dedication and commitment to serve humanity in the face of disasters. Fighting against the overwhelming odds, they begin the arduous process of rescue operations. Each move is calculated, each step measured, time is of the essence. The area is scanned meticulously, searching for signs of life beneath the wreckage. The fortunate survivors are carefully extracted, a testimony to the human spirit's undying resilience. These survivors are then escorted to safe havens, makeshift shelters established to provide them with a temporary refuge against the devastating aftermath. There they receive immediate medical attention. Skilled medical personnel work tirelessly to treat injuries, both physical and psychological, that the survivors have sustained. In addition to treating wounds and fractures, the medical team also combats an invisible enemy, radiation sickness. Utilizing advanced equipment and medication, they endeavor to mitigate the harmful effects of radiation exposure on the human body. Survivors are taken to shelters and treated for injuries and radiation sickness. So, what's the best strategy for survival? Three simple words. Shelter and time. Distance implies moving away from the calamity. The further you are, the greater are your chances of survival. If a warning alarm blares, the immediate should be evacuation. Distance yourself as far as you can from the impending danger. However, if escape seems impossible, finding shelter is the next solution. Underground shelters are your best bet against a nuclear disaster. Basements, subways, or specially designed fallout shelters can save lives. Time is the final crucial element. Radioactive fallout decays with the first 48 hours being the most lethal. Therefore, staying secure during this time frame can enhance your survival odds significantly. The first 48 hours are the most dangerous, so staying sheltered during this period can greatly increase your chances of survival. Remember, this is a worst-case scenario. The most robust strategy to consider in this context is prevention. It's crucial to foster an environment of peace, engage in diplomatic and encourage steps towards nuclear disarmament. If we delve into the effects of a nuclear explosion, we find a landscape of immediate and widespread devastation that extends its crippling effects over a long period. Grasping the severity of these effects and having a comprehensive understanding of the appropriate reaction methods can significantly enhance your chances of survival. The three crucial factors to consider here are distance, shelter, and time. Distance from the blast, a solid shelter to protect from radiation and enough time to react, all contribute to survival. Above everything else, promotion of peace and diplomacy stands as our best defense against such a catastrophe. It ensures that we never have to face this situation. 
and above all, promoting peace and diplomacy can help ensure such a catastrophe never comes to pass. We hope that the information provided in this video serves as an eye-opener to the tremendous devastation such an event can cause, and the importance of peace and diplomacy in preventing such a catastrophe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss our future videos. We aim to equip you with knowledge and understanding because in a world full of uncertainties, knowledge truly is power. Stay safe, stay informed, and always remember, the best strategy is prevention.